Between July and August 1943, in the Kursk region, the Soviet Union and the Nazi army came face to face in one of the most brutal and impressive battles in history. It was one of the largest confrontations between human beings and armored vehicles, with the participation of 3 million soldiers, about 8,500 tanks and 5,000 planes, combining the potential of both sides. But beyond the figures, what is truly shocking is that within each piece of machinery, artillery or offensive, there were flesh and blood people who suffered firsthand one of the greatest hells of World War II. In this new episode of Military History, we are going to learn about the Battle of Korsk through the eyes and experiences of its protagonists. By 1943 the cards for World War II were already cast. It was clear that, for Nazi Germany, the great European enemy to defeat was the Soviet Union, that is why Hitler's men devised a secret operation to deliver a lethal blow. The troops launched a last-ditch effort on the Eastern Front with the intention of crushing the Red Army. To do this, they concentrated all the power of their armored forces and their most modern weapons, forming a sea of combat tanks ready to fight to the death, under the orders of the most prestigious generals in the Reich. But the Soviet government had an ace up its sleeve. Thanks to the intelligence services known as the Red Orchestra, Stalin's generals had months in advance to prepare for combat at Korsk. The Soviets built a staunch defense designed to wear down the German armored fleet, combined with a million anti-tank and anti-personnel mines laid along the 250-kilometer Korsk salient. The result was the largest defensive belt ever built, covering a territory similar to that of Belgium. The Marshal of the Soviet Union, Kirill Moskalenko, was a central figure and even wrote books on the Korsk combat. In his words, this is what happened, over the course of 50 days, combats that were unprecedented in their brutality and violence took place in a small territory. Millions of people, 70,000 guns and mortars, tens of thousands of tanks and planes participated in the fight. According to Moskalenko, the importance of the event was known on both fronts. The commandos on both sides knew that the results of the battle would have a decisive influence on the outcome of World War II, which is why the preparations took so long. But no amount of preparation could get the soldiers ready for a month and a half of constant offensives. What started as a German advance on July 5, 1943, was answered with a Soviet counteroffensive on July 12, 1943. Both sides had a mix of modern and old tanks. The Soviets used the classic T-60, T-70, and T-34, in addition to the less frequent KV-1 and ISU-122 artillery pieces. The Germans had the Panzer III, IV, V and VI, the latter two being the mythical Panther and Tiger, respectively. Soviet Commodore Pavel Rotmistrov describes his experience in the Battle of Korsk in this way, after several minutes of firing on the move, the attack power of our tank corps broke through the Nazi lines, it was a rapid assault through the enemy forces. Their Tiger and Panther tanks lost their advantage due to proximity, and were totally outmatched by Soviet T-34 tanks, and even T-70 light tanks at close range. When talking about the most brutal tank battle in history, we cannot fathom the din, explosions, heat and chaos that comes from having thousands of multi-ton machines dueling on the same ground. Our Rotmistrov remembers it as hell on earth, smoke and dust swirled over the battlefield. The ground trembled from the strong impacts. Tanks crashed and got stuck, fighting to the death, or until one was rendered useless. The tanks that could no longer advance, but whose weapons were still working, continued to fire. Soviet tank officer Yevgeny Shkurdilov was one of the most prominent soldiers in the Battle of Korsk. I destroyed my first tank while moving on the tracks of a train. 100 meters from my position I saw a German Tiger that started firing at our formation. Apparently, that tank had managed to destroy many of our machines. I aimed armor-piercing ammunition and fired. The tank caught fire, I fired again, and the flames grew. The crew escaped and for some reason I did not seek to eliminate them. Then Shkurdilov managed to destroy other T3 and Panther tanks. The latter in particular meant a great honor for the Soviet soldier, this model was one of the most advanced and powerful on the planet. 
I had a sense of pride, like I had done something heroic, recall Shkurdilov. Of course, the Battle of Kursk was not only hell for the Allied side, German tanks suffered massive losses. German soldier Wilhelm Residential recalls, suddenly a T-34 broke through the lines and headed towards us. Our radio operator began to give me ammunition to load the weapon, the commander yelled at us to shoot nonstop, the tank was getting closer and only after the fourth shot did I hear the thank God from our superior. What residential lived was the experience of hundreds of soldiers who operated inside the tanks but had no chance of knowing what was happening outside, only that they were in danger and that at any moment an enemy tank could open fire. Also in his words, then we determined that the T-34 stopped just 8 meters from us. At the top of its turret, there was a hole 5 centimeters in diameter. The lines of both sides were indiscernible, it was chaos. After almost a month and a half of arduous combat, the figures escalated to sidereal numbers. The Germans lost 81,000 soldiers, wounded 122,000 and left behind more than 2,500 tanks and 3,000 artillery pieces. On the Soviet side 250,000 soldiers died, with 600,000 wounded and between 4,500 and 6,000 tanks were destroyed. The figures seem to indicate a failure on the part of Stalin's men, but the truth is that both sides were totally devastated, leaving practically all their tanks and artillery pieces smoking in the Kursk lands. The important thing is that it was the first time during World War II that a German offensive was stopped before it could break through enemy defenses. The penetration of the panzers never exceeded 8 kilometers and in many cases the German advantage lasted only a few hours. The Battle of Kursk was the last strategic offensive that the Germans could launch on the Eastern Front. After several weeks of fighting, the operation reached a stalemate with neither side able to advance. In parallel, the Allied invasion of Sicily and Kutuzov's Soviet offensive convinced Hitler that the operation should be suspended immediately. Germany's heavy losses of men and tanks ensured that the Soviet Red Army took the strategic initiative for the remainder of the war. In many ways, this was a turning point that steered the conflict towards the defeat of the Nazis. To conclude, we want to refer to the words of General Ivan Parotkin, who in his book The Battle of Kursk summed up the Soviet effort in this simple way, the exploits of the Soviet soldiers during their battle against the fascist tanks, especially the more modern models and powerful vehicles, were heroic and exemplary. We have reached the end of this video, but first we want to invite you to subscribe and activate notifications to be aware of all our news. We will meet again in the next installment of Military History.